as always, this video is sponsored by Local Guy. They provided all the materials and they make cool stuff. So check hey everybody. Out. Happy holidays, whichever holidays you do or don't celebrate. Um, Y'all really liked the other uses for wet molds video. So we have more uses for wet molds. I like this pill shape, but I like to use it in a way it makes a great tray, but I have two of them here, which means since I released the first wet mold video, it would have been like, why don't you put two wet molds together and sew them like that? And you can, but I don't use a sewing, uh, I don't use a stitching pony. It's a lot, it seems like a lot of work, to be honest with you. I wasn't interested. I give you the reasons. But what we're gonna do is we are going to make a stitchless, trendy, because everyone's using rivets for everything now. It's bored back to punk rock. Fresh tattoo, go punk rock. Bag that fits like a nice cell phone and, and everything. We're not gonna use any stitching. We're gonna use a hole punch. We're gonna use probably a screwdriver and we're gonna use the little Chicago screws. And that's it. And hopefully we'll come out with a bag at the end of this. So let's get started. I know not everyone can order two hides at once. So if you can't, what you can do is you can prioritize the five, six and order straps from Buckle Guy because they sell pre-cut straps. So that's a much cheaper way to go. I just happen to do the volume that it makes sense for me to just save the money and buy the hides to make the straps myself. Um, but you really only need like two of their medium panels to make this project and then one strap to make the strap for the, the bag. So that's your materials. Um, as far as tools are concerned, you're gonna need a hole punch that fits whatever Chicago screws you're using. I'm using the teeny itty bitty tiny ones. So I don't know what size that is, but we'll figure it out. And um, we're gonna need a set of dividers, a calipers, and uh, something to cut with. I would suggest the solid brass quarter signature cutting blade handle because it is very steady and it works really well. Okay, so step one is we're gonna take, you could do this with rivets too, uh, pop rivets or whatever kind of rivet you want. But we're gonna take our rivet and see how wide we need to go. Now, since I'm using the teeny tiny Chicago screws, a half inch gives me plenty of room on either side. If I were using a bigger, I think this is an 11 millimeter cap, because um, it's close to a half inch. Uh, I would want to give myself three quarters of an inch, but since we're using this little guy, I'm gonna take my calipers and I'm gonna bring it in to a half inch. Now this is definitely a stylized bag. This is gonna be a bag that's got rivets all around it. So if that's not your thing, this might not be your project. But we're then gonna take our calipers and we're just gonna trace around our whole wet mold. YouTube magic. So as you can see, I left the top of each uncut because we need to cut them across this way. So what we're gonna do is we're going to use a, the lines on our cutting board and we're gonna use the bottom of the piece and this line, these two lines should be straight. Cut them out with a ruler and we're gonna measure up so that we know that both of them are even. Now what I wanna do is I wanna cut just like this curve, where this curve starts, I wanna cut just before it. So it looks like, we're gonna say seven and a quarter. And this is where you kinda of wing it a little bit. So I'm kinda of going by eye. You can fix it with the sander later. Again, it's leather work. It doesn't need to be perfect, perfect. And be very careful. It's more of like a scoring situation. So what I'll do is I'll cut like this and get through the top part. And then I kind of just take the ruler away and then just cut straight down and over. And I turn around and I cut straight down and over. And that is what we need. Okay, so we're gonna line everything up like so. 
If you want to use clips, go for it. And all I'm going to do is make one line here and one line there. I'm not going to trust these lines. I'm just going to transfer them. And then I'm going to go back to my cutting board and make sure everything's legit. So to give you an idea of what you're looking at here, I've clipped it together. Now this is just the medium or large pill form from Bakla Guy. Look at that, look at that shape. And on the inside, I don't have my phone on me. This is roughly phone sized. Plenty of room. Fit a wallet in there. Just a nice little going out bag. So I have these clipped together, which is basically taking the place of our Chicago screws but we need to add a flap to one side. However you want to do it's cool. I'm going to show you how I do mine. And the other thing we need is a closure. I'm going to just use a LOX. I'm going to do a short, a short little flap with the LOX right there. So you can pop it in, pop it out, done ski. Sorry, I might've gotten a little dark there. I'm trying manual settings on this camera, but as you can see, this thing worth its weight in gold. I did a three quarter inch radius on this one and a one inch radius on this one. Sorry, hide my face. And the reason I did that is because the total width of this is six inches, but the body of this is four and a half inches. So this is going to fit perfectly on there. And then when it folds over, it'll protect everything from rain. It's always nice to have a little hanging tab on a bag because, and I learned this as a dude who doesn't carry a purse, which if you do, more power to you. Not saying purses, carrying purses is just for girls. I just don't carry one. And I learned this because when you go somewhere, you don't always want to hang your purse. Say your purse just has shoulder straps, it's a crossbody. Well, the straps, the strap, the crossbody strap is gonna to be too short or it's gonna to be too long. So you're gonna drag your bag on the ground. We wanna have a, a crossbody, but then we also wanna have a little loop so that if you go to a restaurant or if you go somewhere, you can hang this bag up on this little loop and then the, the crossbody straps will hang below it, but your bag will never drag on the ground. So all we have to do is create a little something like this. We'll trim these neat, probably do a little rounded something or other, I'll glue them. So we need a center hole in both. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna mark it in this piece and then I'm gonna trace it onto this piece. For Christmas this year, I got myself some new Osborne strap end punches. So I think we can use those on this. I'm not even gonna pretend to open them in a fancy way. This is the, I don't, I don't even know which one we got. We got, this is a pointed one. I got half inch and three quarter. It's usually the two that I stick to. That's half inch, that's three quarter. These are the rounded ones that ain't rounded. Half inch. So that means this is going to be three quarter. These are super nice. So, since I just guesstimated, yeah, this is a half inch strap. So here's what we ended up with. I did a slot punch and two. Chicago screws on the back, lets it move around. Of course, you can always replace these anywhere I'm putting Chicago screws. You can put rivets. I just kind of want to be able to take most of this apart. So I'm just going to really put these new small Chicago screws to the test here. And the next thing we need to do is make this up the back of our bag. So I need two attachment points with D-rings so that we can hang these off of a crossbody strap. So I am using my favorite, uh, the B9628, I believe, in three quarter inch. These are like a D-ring, but also much fancier than a D-ring. So your strap goes through here. And then when you put your clip on, it perfectly centers it and it holds it nice. So we're gonna use these guys. What we have is we have our D-ring, well, triangle ring, and I've made two pieces. One is going to go through each. I like to keep them a little thick so that you're, when you're pulling them through, they're not just like slide through. 
because then you don't get any movement and it, the piece just feels a little more solid, but you can do it however you'd like. Now you'll notice I'm not burnishing anything on this bag. Um, it's kind of a test. So I figure if this works, you guys can go out and make these all super, super nice. But for this video, we're gonna test to see if it even works. Um, this is going to be a Chicago Scribble and I'm gonna use a bigger version. It's gonna go through these two holes here. It's gonna go through this hole here, like that. And then it's also gonna go through what is the back of the bag. Now the important part that we need to focus on, here's the other one, so where did I lost it? I did not, so we'll put that on there so we know where it is. Now the important part about this flap, right, because we have two dimensions here. We have the size of the wet molded part, which is the three-dimensional size. Then we also have the size of the exterior part, which the bag ultimately is gonna look as wide as it is. So we, we need to have this small enough so that the flap can come over it and cover it, but these corners need to be clipped because if we have it here, it's just gonna be really, you're gonna have like a quarter inch that sticks out and it's not gonna be a good look. I think I mentioned this in the last video, but one of the nice thing about Chicago screws is if this is a little loose, you can always add a washer, but I would also implore you, if it's not too loose, use some Loctite and just let it be loose because it's also gonna make the bag way more comfortable for whoever is carrying it because it's gonna be able to move around, which is not something in leather that we see a lot or that we do a lot of. We don't make a lot of pieces in leather that allow for movement. And this bag could easily be one of them. So I'm gonna screw this down. Now I'm not Loctiting anything, but if you're making this uh, and you want them to be semi-permanent, make sure that you Loctite these, which is just, uh, for those of you who don't know, Loctite is just kind of, it's not quite a glue, but it just, once you thread something in, it makes it more difficult to come out. You can always use clear nail polish. You can use a little tiny dab of super glue. But now look, there's the back of our bag, looking all fancy, and we can adjust, everything can adjust. Now, if I wanted these to be tighter, I could put a little washer there. Maybe I will in the end, we'll see. Or I could put a washer inside. So I have, actually, let's do that. We're gonna use the KS Blade washer punch. Not even gonna edit, I'm gonna turn around this way. We're going to take some scrap and we're going to take two washers and we're going to see if we like washers or no washers better. The way this works is you just pull this out and you have your washer right there. Very cool. Oh, well, there's also a washer in there. Now I'm going to add a leather washer here and just see if that affects. I might actually have to punch this hole bigger with a regular rotary punch. Um, just see how that affects like the feel of that connection because that's where it's not going to break but oh it's also not that i need the right thread inside here i'm going to put it on the inside because it's not a design element that i'm looking to show off on the outside but you want a little extra leather than chicago screw because it gives the Chicago screw something to bite into. It's almost like using a lock, wa a lock washer um, when you're putting together like furniture or something, or any mechanical device, I suppose. Um, this, I think this is the right move, yeah. That's gonna give us a much tighter fit on the outside with no wiggling. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the other washer that I punched onto this one. So here we go. I have to admit, I am very pleased with how we're looking for a little sample. And now what we're gonna do is we are going to strap this, the other piece. We're gonna clip these together with our alligator clips and we're gonna mark out our whole flap situation with our locks closure and all that stuff. We have, this is just clipped together for now. Our back is looking beautiful. If anything is out of whack, we just rotate it because they're Chicago screws. If we want to remove anything, we just unscrew them because we haven't Loctited them yet. And you can see now why we have this hangover because it covers the top of the bag. 
So I'm gonna look at this like the side at the side like a cheeseburger. And I've decided that where the curve starts is where I want my bat my bag flap to end. So I'm just gonna kinda wing it. If you want to make a pattern out of this later, go for it. But this is a sample. So I will bring this down to my cutting board here. This isn't all fancy. I will bring this down. I'm gonna bring this down to the cutting board. Uh, using the lines on the cutting board to get a nice straight cut. And now this isn't so much for getting the, the closure on the flap as it is getting the closure on the body because I am gonna glue the body together before I put the Chicago screws in. It's just to make sure that we're getting it right. Yeah, that's the move. And then you get to decide all the cool stuff. Like all we need to do is cover this. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a little mark right there. Then I'm gonna use the lines on my cutting board here. Let me move you a little bit. There we go. I'm gonna use the line on my cutting board to follow it down and copy it there. Then I'm gonna take my ruler and I know that that covers the entire top of my bag. So I can have fun with the rest of it. I'm gonna add a little shape by going from that line. I'm gonna go a half inch in on either side. A little trick I like to do. It just gives it just enough zhuzh, just enough design instead of being like way too kind of bleh. Okay, here we go. So the circle acrylic pack, I chose one that's not completely round. I want just a tiny little flat spot. Just, uh, it's gonna be like a quarter inch, but it'll, it'll just give it a little more motion or a little more interest. And if it doesn't work, I can, I can always like totally circle it out. But on bag fronts, I like to add just a little flat mark and I kind of have an idea too that I might want to go with that would make this look cool. So you can see when I cut this out now, you have your curve there and really you're only flat for a little tiny bit and then we're right back into the curve. How does that look? How are we looking? Yep. So what you're seeing here is you're like, oh, it looks a little too flat. It's because I cut outside of the line. Now, if I come back in and adjust my cut, that will all but go away. And you'll see it looking perfectly curved because this has a little bit, this is a perfect curve, but there's gonna be a little bit of flat down here because I'm sanding it, so. So now, we take an awl. I'm gonna line this up at six inches. Six inches, we wanna center this. So now we need a center punch mark and line for our locks closure. It's gonna go right there. I am going to punch a hole for it. And all we needed this to do was so that when we close this, now we can take an awl, make sure it's centered. Let me bring you closer. So now we can make sure it's centered here and we can make our mark here. That'll allow us to take all these clips off. Bada boom. And punch that hole with any hole punch really, as long as it's big enough to fit a lock.
All right, so we have both of our sides glued. This is all glued. We have our locks installed. What I'm gonna do is, this is sticky, so it's gonna be annoying, but I'm gonna start at the top of both sides so they're lined up. And then I'm gonna use clips. And this is not to hold the glue. This is to hold the pieces. Then, since I know that I did roughly a half inch on everything, and I'm using Toluene free barge, because it's a little less sticky, it's still pretty sticky, but you can pull it apart if you need to. I'm gonna do my best to kind of wiggle everything so that it's even, because if you just put it down, you'll be like, oh, one side's trimmed differently than the other, but it's a wet mold, so like leather does really wet, weird stuff when you wet mold it. And I'm sure my cuts aren't perfect, but it's not gonna look deformed. Um, I would rather have less of like this to trim down. So you're gonna wanna sand this down and do your beveling before we install our final Chicago screws. But remember, this is glued together. You don't have to glue it, but if you do, it's not going anywhere. I'm using Buckle Guy's new bevelers. I finally learned how to use them. They're really beautiful, especially for like a floating project like this where there's really nothing under there. Um, I wasn't used to them because weavers are kind of at a strange angle. Not at a bad angle, they're nice. I'm not trying to trash talk, but this is one hell of a beveler for the price. We're gonna take a little bit of sandpaper. And the thing I want to impress upon you here is that you don't need all the tools. You could do this with a drill press. You could make your own wet mold. I would suggest buying Buckle Guys Wet Mum because they're CNC'd, they're perfect. And you can't get the, it's really hard to build a wet mold where you get this flat, nice, no wrinkles. It's just great. But the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go in, we're gonna get as centered as we can, and we're gonna punch our first hole. Like that. And do that on both sides. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go all the way down to the bottom. I want a nice centered rivet right at the bottom there. If I get my hole punch in. And if you can't, just push until you can. There we go, like that. See, it's not even that centered, but what I've done is I've made an inch and a half spacer because that's how far apart I want my rivets to be, or my Chicago screws, I'm sorry. And I'm just going to take my scratch hall and I'm gonna go around and mark an inch and a half. Perfect. So we go through, we punch our holes kind of sideways so we're not digging into stuff. Okay, so this is another thing. When you wet mold, you could flatten the wet mold. It's gonna bounce right back. So if I want this truly centered, I gotta muscle it a little bit, which is totally fine. And here we go. So we have a center seam, fully wet molded, no stitched, all Chicago screws, piece. Opens like that, plenty of room inside and you can take almost the whole thing apart. I'm not gonna be able to do this without looking at it. Here we go. So, this is how it can be done. I think I would go, this is a five, six ounce. I would probably go closer to a six, seven ounce, just because these are a little bit less, I'd like these to be a little bit tighter, um, or you can just rivet, just use small rivets. Um, but I think it's really cool. Just remember to use your Loctite because these will back out if they're not tight enough. These will not back out because they have the spacer. Um, but you have your hanging thing. Y'all know that I'm not gonna make a strap. I just never get around to it. I kinda like this design even too. Um, but that's it. You wanted to know how to make a center seam wet molded bag and this is about how you would do it. So thank you guys so much for watching. I am feeling renewed. I am feeling very excited to design things that I normally would not design. Um, just 
a lot of good energy flowing through from you guys, from friends. And uh, that's going to be the end of this one. I can't wait to see what you guys come up with. Remember, with this style, um, nothing has to be perfect. I didn't do the edges on these. I'm going to uh, because it was a sample. But this is my first sample. And in my opinion, if I were to put a strap on this, I would sell it. Um, it is, there are no flaws anywhere at all. And that is largely in due to part, in, in due to, in part due to how good Buckle Guys molds are. Wet molds, because they're CNC. Um, largely due to the part, the fact that you're not going to get a, br a better brass fitting than Buckle Guy. I'm waxing poetic, they're not paying me to say this. And largely due to the fact that we now have tiny Chicago screws. I think these are the 3 16th size um, at our disposal. So I think I already said this already, but thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.